Hi, I am Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly Media. I'm with Heinrich Ingo. He is a MySQL architect and author, and he's going to be a speaker at OzCon 2013 this year. Hi. Um, thank you for joining me. We are oh, going to talk. My pleasure. <laughs> we are going to talk about high availability and MySQL. So, tell me, why is that such a hot topic nowadays? Uh, well, yeah, I think the. The need, uh, or, or let's say, assumption that that the application should be highly available, always available, basically, has has changed in the last five to ten years, maybe. So over a long period of time. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it's it's a quite a challenging problem for databases, uh, in in particular. So so it's been. The need has been there, year, there for, like I said, 10 years, but we've been improving uh, for a long time on, on how to do it right. So tell me, um, how have people been improving it, uh, especially MySQL? Yeah, in, in the MySQL world, um, well, uh, and this is uh, like the topic I will talk about in OSCON also. Uh, MySQL uh, was, was quite early with uh, built-in feature MySQL replication, uh, which, for example, Postgres only introduced recently, some years ago. So, so although, in, you know, in general, uh, you would expect Postgres to have more features, but, but in terms of, of replication, high availability, high availability MySQL replication, uh, very widely used uh, on websites, on the Internet. And, and what can we say about that? Uh, it, it was quite uh, easy to set up and easy to get going and kind of easy to understand. So you do database transactions, and they are kind of copied to a slave and replayed so that the slave is, is like a, a, a copy uh, or, a, or a replay of, of the master database. So, so that was kind of easy, uh, but it, it hasn't been perfect then, you know, when, when we've grown up and, and demands uh, get higher, so, uh, so it has a performance bottlenecks. And, and then also, I would say, the demands of uh, before, you know, when you were running a blog or something like Slashdot, um, if, if there was a database crash, they don't happen so often anyway. So, so, you know, if a database crashes and you lose a few comments on your blog, not a big deal. Uh, but now people are, are doing business uh, on these databases, right? And, and you know, if, if you lose, uh, like if you are an e-commerce site and you lose a few uh, transactions, uh, well, first of all, you've lost money, and, and probably the person who tried to purchase something from you is going to be really pissed off. So, so the demands there in, in kind of protecting those last milliseconds of transactions changed, and, and uh, MySQL replication was asynchronous, so it wasn't really built to it kind of guard against 100% uh, keeping your, your transactions uh, safe. So, so then, for example, one, one area where we've had uh, interesting new developments uh, has been to move to synchronous replication, like uh, uh, MySQL Cluster is, is one product name, or uh, MDB, it's known internally. Uh, and uh, Galera replication has, has become really popular in the uh, last two years. Uh, both of them offer like uh, synchronous guarantees uh, for uh, for uh, replication or, or like committing your transactions exactly at the same time or at least let's say logically at the same time on multiple servers so you have really good redundancy and high availability. So tell me a little bit about your um, your role in the ecosystem of MySQL at this point. Well at, at this point actually it's uh, it's dwindling but uh, I, I've, uh, I've joined uh, MySQL, the company MySQL uh, as a as a pre-sales engineer five years ago, uh, and, and this was uh, just uh, very shortly before it was acquired by Sun. Uh, so so then I was employed by Sun, and then it was acquired by Oracle. Uh, and actually, that acquisition uh, process was quite long. So so by the time uh, the Oracle became the owner of of MySQL, I wasn't actually there anymore. But I I've been then involved. Uh, with MariaDB, which is uh, another fork in the MySQL ecosystem, um, and um, I was I was part of that 
mainly for the first year of, of MariaDB's existence. And, and then I, I, uh, uh, I was a MySQL architect at Nokia. And uh, as part of that, I, I was much involved with, with Drizzle, which is yet another fork. Uh, I, I say I, I eventually became quite close also with Percona, which is uh, yet another MySQL uh, support vendor and fork. Uh, and then, then this uh, technology like, like Galera. Uh, of course, I am still uh, you know, good friends and then follow products like, like MySQL Cluster, which I used to work with then, uh, five years ago. Uh, so, uh, so I, I, I suppose it's been an interesting five years to me that I, I ended up uh, being involved with uh, with a lot of these different uh, parts of, of the MySQL ecosystem, and I, so I really enjoyed it. And, and I, I always wanted, uh, I never wanted to take sides, right? So I always wanted to help everyone and, and learn about the features uh, that everybody. Was, was offering and developing and, and trying to kind of build more communication and cross-pollination there. So you mentioned all of these different forks, like MariaDB I've definitely heard yes. of. So are any of them particularly great at certain things? They are great at certain things, uh, but but they are actually very similar. So it's, it's still... Uh, I would so I, so I would kind of like to answer no, like when, when you say things, so they are actually great mostly at the same thing, and, and uh, uh, a lot of the code base is still the same, uh, and, and there is a lot of code uh, moving between them. So, so MySQL, uh, MySQL is kind of a weird, op or let's say different than many other open source communities, where often you are... Uh, uh, you are organized in a much more hierarchical fashion. So you have a project lead, like Dries is for Drupal, or, or Linus is for Linux, uh, who, who's, who steers uh, uh, at least some kind of, of common direction uh, that ends up in, in a single code repository and, and released as an official version of that product. Then, then you have different distributions that do their own thing around that and, and, and kind of give it to customers. But still, there is like a central point that's uh, that's unquestionable, and in MySQL uh, ecosystem, that's not the case. So, so we still have a common code base, right? So, so all of these folks, uh, well, especially like Percona, MariaDB, are, are still very close to MySQL, and, and the user experience uh, intentionally is, is very much like like just using different versions of the same product. Uh, but they are not collaborating in, a, in that kind of hierarchical structure. So it's, it's more like a, a network of peers, and, and then, you know, someone might copy some code from someone else, but, but there is not like a clear upstream and downstream process. Uh, so, so from that point of view, they, they have the same features, or sometimes they might have the same feature, but, but the other guys implemented it differently themselves, so it still kind of does the same thing, but it's not actually the same code. Um, now tell me so, also, you um, you recently moved from MySQL to yes. MongoDB. So tell me tell me about what that experience was like and why you did it. Uh, it's it's been quite exciting. Uh, it's actually quite recent for me. So um, only a couple of months ago, and um, I, I've had just a couple of friends uh, that I used to work with in the MySQL space already joined uh, Tengen to, to work on MongoDB or sell MongoDB. Uh, but uh, uh, but I, I was very involved with, uh, with Galera and Drizzle and all kinds of things in my scale space, and I, I thought I would never leave like right? that. And uh, uh, then at some point, I, uh, you know, I was kind of finished with what I was doing in those projects, and I, I was thinking what to do next. Uh, and, and then I thought that, you know, why not uh, go with MongoDB? So I, uh, in, in my previous job then at Nokia, I, I was already working with MongoDB for a year, although I, I, I kind of entered as a MySQL expert, but also there uh, the need to, to support projects that were using MongoDB as a database uh, was there, and, and then it became my job to, to support that too. Uh, and uh, so, so I, I was aware of this product, and, and actually I've also, uh, you know, like I, 
like I said, I, I like to, to kind of encourage cross-pollination between MySQL forks. So I was also for many years following uh, the NoSQL databases. So I feel like I, in one way, I, I wasn't interested. I, I hadn't thought uh, for a long time that I would actually like work full-time on MongoDB. Uh, but, but I certainly followed it for a couple of years and, and uh, uh, tried to, to look at features, you know, maybe maybe even uh, thinking that some of them could be copied for, for MySQL, like a, a JSON interface, uh, I, I always thought was really cool. But uh, then, uh, yeah, it just happened. I, I realized it has a lot of momentum and, and it was an interesting opportunity, just career-wise even, uh, to, to work on MongoDB itself. And uh, uh, it's it's quite refreshing, actually. So, so you need to rethink a lot of a lot of things. It's, I think it's, boy, it's uh, 17 years ago I learned about SQL and relational tables uh, and now MongoDB is also a database but uh, uh, the, all the comments and, and uh, queries and everything is different. Even like schema design and planning, like how you organize your data is different. So it's, it's quite uh, when, when you have a lot of experience, it's, it's quite humbling even to, to have to start from the beginning and, and learn new things and learn to think a bit differently. Definitely. Well, um, thank you for your insight. I, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing your session at OzCon 2013. I look forward to be there. It's going to be great. Thank you.